Hello guys, uh, thanks for joining, thanks for watching, we appreciate y'all and once again, y'all stay safe out there with the ever evolving uh, restrictions here and there. So, thanks again. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the exotics. Uh, we're gonna talk about turtles and basically oral abscesses, basically ear infection abscesses in turtles. So there is a difference between a water turtle and a land tortoise. Uh, those are very, very different, and they do have a little bit different husbandry, and their requirements are very, very different. So if you're a turtle owner, make sure you know which one you have. Uh, Red-eared sliders are the most common water turtle here in our area. Uh, definitely see a lot more of those than we do tortoises, kind of the box turtles and those things. So A, know which one you're getting, <laughs> or if you have one, know which one you have. There's a tremendous amount of information out there that it's actually on the internet, there's just overall good information, cross-reference it a couple times, make sure you see a few things overlapping. Whatever you see overlapping, do those. Those are important. What I can tell you is husbandry, husbandry, husbandry. Uh, for those of you that don't know what husbandry means, well, look it up. Um, basically, their environment, their food, their housing, how is their life and their bubble that they live in. That is where 90 plus percent of exotic issues across the board happen. In, from reptiles to the tortoises, the chinchillas, prairie dogs, rabbits, hamsters, so on and so forth. So pay attention if you get one. Don't just listen to the PetSmart, Petco, you know, your breeder, wherever you bought them from. Um, some of those people are not educated and it is just a job and they know how to clean them and feed them and that is what they know. Some of them do take the time and do get educated on them and can actually answer some of those questions for you. But I cannot tell you how many times owners are like, yeah, I got my turtle and this is what they told me to get for basic cleaning, selling things, but they never told them some of the key things like vitamin C for your turtles. That is a huge, huge thing and stay on top of it. Uh, vitamin C deficiencies lead to all kinds of problems. It is cheap, it is easy, it is readily available. In the wild, it's usually in their natural diet. And in captivity, they just get fed crap sometimes, and they do not get fed appropriately, therefore they develop more issues. Reptiles, for those of you that have them, they, when they get sick, they tend to be very, very slow at getting better. So just be aware of that. Do the best you can, do your research. It doesn't have to take long. Um, the more common the exotic reptile is, the more information that's out there, typically the easier it is to take care of them. But you gotta look and have an idea what you're trying to do for humidity, dry spots, hot plates or not, rock heating pads, those can be dangerous. And in our case, the oral hematomas, so an ear infection in our red-eared sliders, because that's what we see them in a lot. But basically, it's an ear infection. Once they get it, the only way to really deal with it is surgically it's your, with your veterinarian. Some doctors are comfortable with it, some are not. Untreated, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually it does cause some issues. It is painful. Um, you know, I can't imagine what it would be like if we had a, I had a mass inside my ear, about where the temporal, temporal lobe is and it's just growing and growing and growing. That would put pressure on everything else. It would hurt, it would be uncomfortable. I would want, want to eat as much and those kinds of things. So stay on top of it, watch out for it. On turtles, their ears are kind of right on the side where that red stripe is. There's usually a little hole. It's kind of in that general area and there's not really a way for you to clean it at home or at least not one that I'm aware of. So keep them in fresh water, make sure they have the right diet, that is huge, huge, huge. And husbandry, 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 because there is more to it than just diet, but diet by far plays a major, major role in all exotics. So do a little research, guys. It might save you quite a bit of time and frustration and discomfort for your little, little exotic. So hope you learned something. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.